Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel. And it also helps us reach others who want to test their math skills with these types of test questions. So this will be our 34th part in this particular math skill series. And what we have going on here is that we have to determine the area of the blue region shown here inside this triangle. We are given dimensions on the outside of the triangle. And we are also told that this uh, orange circle has center at point O and that it is inscribed within the triangle, meaning that it only touches the triangle, the outside of the triangle at point P, R, and Q. So in order to get this blue area right here, we need to know some information. We need to know the radius of this circle and we need to know the distances from A to Q and then A to P. So let's start working on that information. So let's have A to Q, let's have that equal to a value of X. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to black. So since <clears throat> the circle is inscribed inside the triangle, what that means is that A to C is tangent here at point P, C to B is tangent to the circle at R, and then A to B is tangent at Q. Since A to Q is tangent to the circle, that means that a to P is also the same distance as A to Q since they are both tangent to the circle and meeting at a singular point. So this means that this is also a distance of X here. Now, looking at the distance from P to C along the triangle edge here, since the total distance from A to C is 14, that means that this is 14 minus X. And then same uh, reasoning down here from Q to B, since the total is 16, this means this is 16 minus X as a distance here. So since this is a single point tangent here at the circle, meaning at a single point, that means that this distance from C to R is 14 minus X as well. And then down here from R to B is 16 minus X for the same explanation as this was equal to X as this X down here, because you have two tangent lines meeting at a singular point. So how does this help us? Well, we know that CR plus BR will be equal to the total length of BC. Well, this means that we would have 14 minus X plus 16 minus X has to be equal to 10 inches. So you can simplify this down and we end up with 30 minus off 2X is equal to 10. And then X will pop out to be a minus 20 over a minus 2, which is equal to 10 inches. So what that means is that our X here is equal to 10 inches. This is equal to 10 inches over here. <clears throat> and then you can get the rest of the remaining sides if you want to, but I'm going to focus on this area right here since this is where the blue region is. So how does this really help us? Well, we have to do another formula here. Whenever you have a circle inscribed inside of a triangle, there is a relationship between the triangle and the circle regarding the area of the triangle and the radius of the circle. So whenever you have a circle inscribed in the triangle, this is the area or this is the formula that forms. So you would have your area of your overall triangle would be equal to the radius of the circle inscribed multiplied by half the perimeter, which we are calling S. So if we can get the area of the triangle, and then we can also get the half, uh, half of the perimeter because we're given all the dimensions for the perimeter. So all we have to do is get the area of the triangle. Well, since we have the overall perimeter here, we can use Heron's formula in order to get the area of the triangle, thus resulting in the, res the radius of the inscribed circle. So we're gonna let S be equal to half the perimeter of our triangle. So we would have S, would be equal to one half of our sides added up, which would be 14 plus 10 plus 16. And that gives us a total of 20 inches for half our perimeter. Now, utilizing Heron's formula, the area of our triangle would be equal to S times S minus one of the sides multiplied by S minus another side, and then multiplied by S minus the third side, and all of that would have to be square rooted. So let's go ahead and plug in our values here. So we would have S, which is 20, multiplied by 20 minus off one of our sides, which we're just gonna say that side A is 14. 
and then multiply by 20 minus another one, which is 10, and then 20 minus the last one, which we're going to say is 16, and then we square root all of that. So this gives us a total of the square root of 4,800, which is equal to 40 square roots of 3 inches squared for our overall area of our triangle. So utilizing the formula between a triangle and the circle inscribed inside that triangle, we can find our radius for our circle. So the radius would just be rearranging here. It would be our area of our triangle, which I'm just going to write as A delta divided by S. So this would be 40 square roots of 3 divided by S, which is 20 inches. And this gives us 2 square roots of 3 inches for our radius of our circle. So what we have determined here, if I scroll down to the next picture. So what we have determined here is for our section, which this would be 10 inches. This would be 10 inches from A to Q, A to P. And then our radius here from O to the outside or the center of the circle to the outside of the circle is two square roots of three inches for each of these. So how does that help me? Well, look what we have here. If I draw a line from A to O, which is supposed to be nice and straight, because these lines are tangent to the circle, what that means is that we have 90 degree angles forming here. So we can get the area of each of these smaller little right triangles, which would just be one half base times height, where 10 is our base and two square roots of three would be our height. That would be the overall area for this kite formation here. And then we can subtract out this area of our circle sector, and what remains would be the area in blue. So let's work on that. So the overall area for the APOQ kite shape would be this. Since it's just two right triangles, instead of it being two times one half times base times height, I'm just going to take the base times the height. And this would give me 20 square roots of 3 inches squared for my total area, which would be this entire portion right here. And then I have to subtract out the remaining white portion here for this circle sector. So we have to get this angle, this total angle here at O. Well, what we're going to do is we're just going to get the angle of one of the right triangles and then multiply it by 2 since they are the same triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tangent of my O angle for one of my triangles, which that is supposed to be the letter O, not 0, is equal to 10 divided by this 2 square roots of 3, utilizing the tangent function for right triangles. So one of my angle O's for one of my triangle triangles is equal to the tangent inverse of 10 divided by 2 square roots of 3, and that gives me 70.893 degrees. So that just gives me this one right here. So if I want the total angle of O, the total angle of that circle sector, I would just multiply this by 2. So that total angle inside the circle sector would just be 2 times that angle of O inside one of the right triangles, which gives me 141.787 degrees. Alrighty, so now that I have this total angle for O here, I just need to determine the area of this circle inside the circle sector. Well, since there's a total of 360 degrees inside the circle, I only need 141.787 of that 360 degree area. So the area of my circle sector here would be this. I would just take my angle that I have of 141.787 degrees, divide it by the total inside the circle, which is 360 degrees, and then multiply by pi, and then multiply by my radius squared, which my radius is 2 square roots of 3 squared. And this gives me a total area of this white circle sector here equal to 14.848 inches squared. So I have the total area of this entire kite looking section at 20 square roots of three inches squared. 
And, I, and then I just have to subtract out what I just found for my circle area and what is remaining would be the area in blue. So let's go ahead and get that area in blue here. So the area in blue would just be 20 square roots of three inches squared, subtracting off 14.848 inches squared. And what is remaining gives me 19 0.793 inches squared, of course, rounding that off in the end. And that's how you would find that blue area for this particular problem. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned a new math skill along the way. And if you want to test your abilities even further, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.